This chart shows a recent survey of satellites and space junk in low Earth orbit, listed by the country responsible for creating it. The third country might be a surprise to you. China has left almost as much debris as America and Russia, despite having a much shorter history in space. In fact, most of this was from just one missile test in 2007, when China fired a kinetic kill vehicle at one of its own retired weather satellites. The missile hit at a relative speed of about 8 km per second, shattering the satellite into more than 900 large pieces and almost 35,000 small objects. Many of these will remain in orbit for decades or even centuries. Now, the last time I mentioned China's 2007 missile test, I got some flack in the comments for picking on China. So yes, other nations also have done similar things, and its legacy of space junk is typical of early missions in many national space programs. In the 1950s, the global powers faced the likelihood that low Earth orbit would become the new battleground overhead, and control of that space would be a deciding factor in future wars. In 1958, Chairman Mao Zedong announced a plan to develop a space launch capability from the country's ballistic missile program. However, when relations between the Soviet Union and China cooled in the late 1950s and early 60s, the Russian technical assistance also went away. Although the Chinese economy grew slowly in the 60s and 70s, they did become the fifth nation to independently develop and launch their own satellite system with the Long March 1 rocket in April 1970. Over the next two decades, plans for manned space flight were put on hold, but the space launches continued to deploy mostly Chinese satellites. In fact, to date there have been 258 launches using the Long March family of rockets, with a success rate of 94.6%. It took until 1992 before the leadership of a modernized China saw value in the space program again, as a way to stimulate and demonstrate advances in engineering and science. In 1992, Project 921 was approved, its objective to establish a manned Chinese presence in space. The first step of the new program was to develop a human-rated capsule. Shenzhou, meaning divine vessel, flew a successful unmanned test flight in November 1999. Two years later, Shenzhou-2 carried animals on board to test the life support systems – a monkey, a dog, a rabbit and some snails. Despite setbacks, progress on Shenzhou developed steadily and on October 15, 2003, Yang Liwei, the first Taikonaut, travelled on board Shenzhou-5, making China the third nation to independently carry a human into space. Now the Mandarin word for space is Taikong. Add the Western word naught, and you have Taikonaut, the Chinese version of astronaut. Li Wei completed 14 orbits of the Earth in a little over 21 hours, celebrating by waving the flags of the People's Republic of China and the United Nations to the onboard cameras. The next phase of Project 921 was to establish a small space station. By 2011, the Chinese space agency had constructed and prepared the 8.5 tonne Tiangong-1, or Heavenly Palace. The space lab was capable of supporting three Taikonauts for scientific missions of up to a few weeks. The interior was painted in two colours to represent the sky and the ground, helping the Taikonauts to orientate themselves in microgravity. However, the main purpose of a prototype was as a target vehicle to test the docking with the Shenzhou capsule. But while the Tiangong-1 was completing its final ground tests, the Chinese space agency faced a new problem. On August the 18th, a Long March 2C rocket suffered a failure during the second stage engine burn, and it was lost. If the same thing happened during the launch of the Tiangong or a manned mission, it would be disastrous for the entire space program. Engineers hurriedly made more than 170 modifications to the Long March 2 in just six weeks resulting in the new FT-1 version, which was approved to carry China's first space lab. On September 29, 2011, Heavenly Palace successfully launched into its target orbit. In June 2012, the first crew of three Taikonauts arrived, including China's first woman in space, Liu Yang. The Shenzhou-9 spacecraft docked successfully and remained at Tiangong for 11 days. After another manned visit in 2013, Tiangong-1 was put into sleep mode, and its orbit has been gradually decaying ever since. 
but it's almost time for the first heavenly palace to come back down to Earth. In the early months of 2018, the Interagency Space Debris Coordination Committee will track the Space Lab's re-entry to further refine its prediction of where it might end up. In September 2016, a second orbital lab, Tiangong-2, launched from the Jingquang Launch Center in the Gobi Desert to be joined a month later by a two-man crew aboard Shenzhou-11. With a similar size and design to the first heavenly palace, Tiangong-2 was able to support Taikonauts Jinghai Pong and Chengdong for 30 days. During this time, they tested a range of scientific instruments, including the first ever cold atomic clock experiment in space, which operated at a fraction of a degree above absolute zero, so accurate that it only loses one second every billion years. As well as setting up an independent manned space program, China is also breaking new ground with a series of high-tech moon landers. On the 1st of December 2013, a 1200 kilogram lander named Chang-3 launched on a mission to the moon. Five days after the launch, Chang-3 entered an orbit approaching 100 kilometers altitude above the lunar surface. After a second decelerating burn on the 14th of December, the lander descended to just 100 meters altitude above the Mare Ibrium, hovering in position whilst its onboard cameras located a clear landing site. Executing a 12-minute landing sequence, Chang-3 touched down successfully, the first lunar soft landing in 37 years. But the mission was far from over. Like the Soviet lunar hod rovers of the early 1970s, Chang-3 was equipped with a nuclear-powered heating unit to survive the harsh lunar nights. As well as having an array of scientific instruments, the Chinese lander also carried a 140-kilogram rover called Yitu, which explored the volcanic crater near the landing site. The rover was named by public poll. In Chinese mythology, Itu was the pet rabbit of Chang, the moon goddess. So in the West, we know the rover as the jade rabbit, moon rabbit, or just rabbit. But this particular rabbit came to a bit of a sticky intermittent end in January 2014, when it had a mechanical control abnormality, according to the Chinese state media although many in the West believe it fell victim to the highly unforgiving lunar dust jamming its mechanics. It intermittently communicated back again with Earth up until March 2015 when it finally fell silent. But China aims to go even further in 2018 when the backup lander for the Chang-3 mission is scheduled to do a touchdown on the far side of the moon as Chang-4. This will be an impressive first. All the American and Soviet soft landings were executed in direct line of sight with the Earth. The proposed landing site is the South Pole Aitken Basin, a candidate for the largest impact crater in the solar system, with a diameter of 2,500 kilometers. Here, the Chinese lander will be able to examine 15 kilometers of exposed crust, hopefully uncovering evidence to help us understand the Moon's violent past better. In 2016, China launched 22 rockets, that's more than the Russians, and the same number as the US. It has plans for a third space station and its own space telescope in the mid-2020s, with aims to put men on the moon by the mid-2030s. So it looks like NASA, ESA, and SpaceX will have some serious competition in the near future. So thanks for watching, and this episode's shirt was the Navy Paisley by Madcap England and is available from Atom Retro with worldwide shipping from here in the UK. Don't forget we also have the Curious Droid Facebook page, and I'd also like to thank all of our patrons for their ongoing support. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, then you can find out more by clicking on the link now showing. So once again, thanks for watching, and please subscribe, rate, and share.